everybody. Welcome to another edition of Rev Talks. Listen, guys, I want to, I really want to um, be very transparent and even a little vulnerable in this Rev Talks because I want to hit something very dear to me and something that's extremely uh, important because I feel like a lot of people have struggled in this area. And I know myself, I've struggled in this area. And I really feel like that in seeking out what I should say in this Rev Talks that uh, God himself is doing a little bit of work on the inside of me and even exposing some things. So just bear with me as I do this Rev Talks. I pray it's a blessing to you. I want to talk for a few moments today uh, for you that are watching me, no matter where you're watching all over the world. By the way, if you're new to the channel, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, get involved in the channel, put some comments below. Let me know who you are, where you're watching from, and how how this content's being a blessing to you. I love to interact with everyone over our social media platforms. And I want to talk today for a few moments about um, what I'm going to call the, the slow burn of insecurity. I want to talk to you for a few moments about insecurities and how we deal with them. Like, how would you answer... If I were to ask you, do you feel good about yourself? Uh, if I ask you right now, do you feel good about yourself? Would, would your thoughts uh, be filled with the good things or would you immediately start to have self-doubt or anxiety or some nervous things that are happening um, would you be willing to stand tall and say, I feel good about myself. I know who I am. I know whose I am and I'm comfortable in my own skin. You know, there are, there are a lot of different behaviors and attitudes that clearly cross boundaries in our lives uh, as believers in Jesus Christ. You know, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, adultery, uh, greed. I could let this just list thing after thing after thing that cross clear boundaries, but insecurity many times is different because insecurity many times, like I said, when I called it the slow burn, it's like, it's like this slow creeping internal fire that's like a slow burning sensation uh, beneath the surface. It influences our thoughts, our mind, how we feel about ourselves. And it's like we're, we're slowly and subtly burning ourselves from within when we struggle with insecurity. You know, and, and the truth is many times insecurity is hard to identify. Uh, it can, it can really impact our lives and impact the call of God on our lives. You know, I realized when I was thinking about this, that one of the greatest issues I feel like at times in my life, I have battled, uh, is my own insecurity and the, my own insecurities that hide uh, many times and even even reveal themselves in other things. And I'm actually going to to end this video for a few moments. Talk about you know, some signs that we have insecurity. I'm going to talk about some causes of insecurity and how we can move past insecurity, you know, because we, you know, what insecurity is like this feeling of inag inadequacy. It's like that, that we're not good enough. I believe the enemy tries to put in us that we don't have what it takes, uh, that, you know, maybe there's something missing. Like when God made me, he must have made a mistake because I have these great dreams and things I would like to accomplish, but I, I'm, I'm not seeing it happen. And many times with insecurity comes uh, com these signs and feelings of helplessness, of uh, like we don't have purpose, uh, disapproval, rejection. We deal with all of these things when we struggle with insecurity. And the thing is, insecurity can accumulate more and more over time, and it can slowly weigh us down. And so I want to talk about this today because I, re I really feel like that one of the biggest issues I've had in my life has been private insecurity, this, this feeling of maybe being overlooked or the feeling of not having what it takes to get to the next level or these things that happen in our lives. So how do we get 
get here? What are some common causes of insecurity? You know, I was looking and doing some research in uh, psychology today on how to manage insecurity, and it was giving me a lot of information. I want to read a couple of the things that I that really stuck out to me. Insecurity many times hits our life when it's based on previous failure or especially rejection. Whenever we feel like we have been rejected by someone or we've walked through failure, uh, it makes us feel insecure. Uh, many times the recent events in our lives, can it can affect our mood, it can affect the way we feel about ourselves, the way we treat other people. And so it's important that we understand that many times we get caught in the slow burn of insecurity because of failure. Like, it's not about how many times we fail. It's about what we learn from our failure and how we get up from it that ultimately defines us. Many times I feel like some of the most successful people in life, they really fail their way to success. They don't just, they don't just randomly fall into it. They fail their way into it. They try again and again and again. And if they fail, they get back up from the failure and they keep pushing and they keep moving. They never surrender. But many times when you failed, if you're not careful, you start to feel insecure about what you're doing. You know, failure uh, can produce a lot of things in your life. Uh, you know, when you go through failure or you feel rejected by people. I know as a pastor, many times, you know, I, there have been times in my life, I look over the last 10 years where I felt that I was supposed to have, for example, mentors in my life or what some people like to call spiritual fathers. And I've heard so much teaching and preaching about what people in your next level are, are supposed to do to help you go to where God's calling you and all these type of things. And there have been times where I have not seen the elevation that I expected within relationship of mentors in my life. And if you're not careful, when you start to see elevation, even in someone else, <clears throat> it creates insecurity and a feeling of rejection because you feel like, well, this person's good enough to, to do this, or this person must be better than me. And why are you choosing them and not me? And if you're not careful, then your insecurity can also lead to this place of competition. We're now in comparison where you're comparing yourself in an unhealthy way against another person. And so what's dangerous many times is when we expect people to do for us what God was designed to do for us. And so whenever we feel that rejection from people, it can make us feel, you know, insecure. What, what, why am I not good enough? Why am I not enough? What, what, what is wrong with me or the gifts that I have that makes you overlook me? And so these are things that can lead to this slow burn of insecurity. <clears throat> the fact is, we have to make sure that, that we are not allowing ourselves to have the opinions of people uh, elevated over the opinions of God in our life. Because when we do, and we're so desperate for that approval from man and that, that stamp of approval from a mentor or a spiritual father or whatever, when we're so yearning for that, when we don't get it the way we think we should get it, it causes us to feel insecure. Uh, many times we we get insecure and we walk in lack of confidence. Really, some people walk in it because of social anxieties. Uh, there are social anxiety disorders. Some people, you know, um, maybe they were bullied in their life before or they've, they've walked through that or maybe they were excluded from a group they felt they should be in and it created this social anxiety in their life and this insecurity where they, they want to jump in they want to be involved, they want to be a part of what's happening but they're afraid, you know, I don't want to experience that same rejection that I've experienced in the past, I, I don't want to deal with that again and so what happens is the insecurity over fear failures again in the past or rejections in the past, or, you know, maybe you grew up with critical parents or, you know, maybe it was something a teacher said to you or someone sowed something in your life or your mind that created this insecurity. Like you'll never be good at this subject, or you'll always be, th be this because of your last name or the color of your skin or your socioeconomic status. And what happens is many time, um, most of the time in our life, you know, people begin to get focused more 
more on what they don't have than what they do have. And then we maximize what we don't have and it leads to insecurity. And if you're not careful, when you are insecure enough, you start to judge other people. Like I said, that flows out of comparison. So here's the thing. When we want to deal with our insecurity when it comes to these things, we have to really do a couple things. And so I want to get into more of those later. But let me also share with you another thing. Many times we walk in insecurity because we're we're literally driven and influenced by perfectionism. And I have been there and I have to admit it. I've had to repent. There are times where, you know, even this YouTube channel that you guys are watching right now, um, I have other channels and other venues and things I do. And there have been times where I've not shot videos or I haven't put out content that I know that people, uh, you know, God put in me for someone else to enjoy because I'm a content creator. You know, that's what I do. And there have been times where I've not done it because it just, I didn't think it was perfect. It wasn't <clears throat> done good enough. The camera, the camera wasn't right. Or my voice was off or our recording device was off. And I, you know, you guys, if you go back to the first couple of videos of Rev Talks, you know, the audio quality wasn't that good because I finally had to get out of my perfectionism and my insecurities about what people would think about my videos not being perfect and just start making them. And that's what I'm going to do. And I know they're not perfect now and I'm going to keep making them, keep going because I know someone watching this needs to hear what I'm saying. And so I wanted to give you also some signs that you're dealing with insecurity and um, hopefully these will speak to you in a way they've spoke to me. You know, insecure people try, have the tendency to make others feel insecure about themselves. You know, uh, many times when we start to question our own self-worth, it makes us great critics of other people. So what happens is we start to focus on the shortcomings of other people instead of focusing on ourselves. You know, I heard Dr. Miles Monroe, he used to say it this way. He said, he said, strong people talk about ideas. He said, uh, normal people talk about things. Uh, he said, weak people talk about people. And so what happens is when we become a person that's constantly critiquing other people, it could be because of our own insecurities. Uh, another thing is insecure people, they, they really need to brag and show off their accomplishments. You know, one ways that this snuck into my life where I had to get it out was God really opened a lot of great doors in my life at different times. And I've been fortunate to know some great men and women of God. And I used to be quick to brag about who God had put me around. And I didn't realize it was because I was so insecure that I, it's like I needed somebody to think I was important. And I feel like I almost died on a road called important. As a matter of fact, because of what I went through personally, I actually preached a message years ago called don't die on a road called important because I felt myself and my own pride that had been wounded, struggling with my own insecurities and really putting out this false sense of accomplishment, accomplishment that moves into uh, not just showing off our accomplishments, but another thing insecure people do. And I have been guilty of this um, is what, what I call the humble brag. The humble brag is a brag that is um, hidden and disguised as a self-derogatory statement. You know, you guys have seen these things on Facebook. Um, you've seen a lot of things that people uh, will put post and put out there like they're trying to be humble, but they're really bragging. That's called the humble brag. And many times insecure people in order to try to prove to you how humble they are, will try to approach things that way. And, and I've, I've really struggled with making this video because I feel like there's been times in my life where I've really struggled with that because many times the opinions of people and, and really when your pride is hurt, what happens is pride many times wants us to gain acknowledgement. Like we really want to, to not seem to be a joke or like I said earlier, not important. And so what happens is really pride in this insecurity and this humble brag, it really takes the focus from God and puts it on us. And what we don't realize is we're struggling with something on the inside that the enemy is twisted. And what the enemy is twisted is something that comes as a secondary uh, consequence of us being made in the image of God. Being made in the image of God, we have, if we're not careful, we can have this innate desire to want <clears throat> what God wants. 
And what God wants is glory and worship. So many times, even, for example, even in the Christian world, I don't have to speak to the secular world. We have this desire to be famous, to make it, to be put on, to be on the circuit, to be on a stage because I've got a word and I'm this and I'm that. And really what we don't realize when we say we want to be successful or we want to be famous or I want to preach on this stage or I want this and that. If you're not careful, the enemy will twist that. And what you're really saying is I want to be worshiped and you don't even realize it. And that's one thing that insecurity will do in our hearts and lives. Here's another thing. Insecure people. And here's one of the key ones that slapped me in the face because I have done this. And listen, guys, I've been through a whole season of just repenting. God, help me to be who you've called me to be. Insecure people frequently complain about everything that's not good enough. Like instead of focusing on the good that we have and maximizing it, we focus on what we don't have or what we perceive to lack. And that's a big sign. If you see any of those signs, you need to come before God. And I'm going to give you a couple strategies real quick on how to remove insecurity from your life. First and foremost, obviously you go to God with these things. Seek the Lord, be open and honest, confess things before him and say, God, I need you to show me me. And in that, ask God this, Lord, Help me to know and to see my value. What am I really worth to you? Not to people, not to myself, not to what everyone else has said, to you. I cannot rely on other people's estimation of me to verify my worth. I need to know what you say about me. And in that The next thing I do in my prayer is not only seek to know value, seek to release fear. Release fear. Release the fear that tells me I'm not good enough. Fear is a liar. It's trying to steal your happiness, your joy. You know, the, the fact is we cannot feed on fear. If you feed on fear or you feed fear, it will constantly grow bigger and it'll exchange truth for lies. Fear will begin to move against your faith and it'll begin to show you what you'll never accomplish in your own strength because you of what you can't do in your own insecurities. And here's the truth. I can't do what really God wants me to do in my own strength. I need him if I want to get everything he has for my life because God does not create future for us that makes him unnecessary. So you need to remember that right now. If you have a picture of your future where God's taking you, it will require faith and trust in him to get there. Another thing you have to do to remove insecurity from your life is learn to develop Christian thinking. I must change my thought life. Your thought life and your thinking has a huge impact on how you view the world and how you view yourself. If you're constantly thinking about what you don't have, what you're not good enough at, who you aren't, if you're constantly thinking along those things, those arguments will begin to dominate your life. The next thing you have to do in order to move past, like I said, we need to pray about these things. We have to know ourselves but also we cannot allow our life to be emotionally driven. If you are driven and guided by your emotions, your emotions will get you into a place where you can't move past your own insecurities because emotional content needs to be controlled if you ever want to walk into the favor and goodness of God in the future God has for you because you can sabotage your life by being emotionally unstable. You know, I cannot stress to you enough the importance of using the word of God to fight the lies that you're telling yourself and how that affects you emotionally. I can't tell you how important it is for you to hear what God says about you and not people because that will that'll help strengthen you emotionally. We cannot use our own estimation or others' estimation of ourselves to verify our worth. It must come from God. We must hear from him. We must remove the fear. We must kick out the lies. And Because here's the thing, man. The enemy wants you stagnant. He wants 
you stuck. He wants you living in comparison, living in insecurity, not moving forward. And it's not an open, blatant sin like others. It's a slow burn, slowly telling you day after day you're not good enough. But I'm telling you, for somebody watching this today, you're coming out of a season of insecurity. You're moving past this. You're going to step into everything God that says that you are, and you're going to walk in a freedom you've never seen before because I can feel it in my spirit. God is awakening you to the real you. He's letting you know you are enough. You are everything that he called and made you to be. You're not lacking anything. You're about to tap into the anointing that he has for your life and you're going to soar and you're going to fly. Get out of the way. Let God be God. Let his spirit burn out of you the insecurities, the pride and, and all those things that keep us focusing on ourselves and not him. And I promise you a great future is awaiting you. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning into this Rev Talks. This is, this is the Rev right here. Like, subscribe, subscribe, get in the comments, get involved, share this video if you would all across your social media platforms. Follow me on, uh, if you we're not friends, friend me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, meet me on Instagram. Let's stay connected, guys. Until next time, this is The Rev, and I'm out.